Today, there are approximately 7.9 billion people on the planet. In many ways, we are different. But in many ways, we are also alike. All over the world, people gather for meals, fall in love, celebrate common causes, whether it's a holy day, a community effort, or the victory of a sports team. Everywhere, grandparents tell stories of the old days. People stop to admire a fabulous sunset. A baby's giggle draws a smile even out of the grouchiest onlooker. Because we are made in God's image, we all share a love for his creative beauty, a hunger for justice, a sense deep within us that there must be something greater to live for than what we see around us. Ecclesiastes observes that God has made everything beautiful in its time. He has set eternity in the human heart Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. Romans reminds us, since the creation of the world, God's invisible attributes, his eternal power, and divine nature have been clearly seen, because they are understood through what he has been made. But instead of living as we were created to, as the image of God in loving relationship with him, humanity chose to do what was right in their own eyes. Over generations, this meant that my needs, my tribe, my people, my race, my interests were elevated over everybody else's. And each group was willing to harm the other to get what they wanted. Out of these rebellious roots came murder, deceit, war, racism, and all kinds of injustice and inequ inequity. When me is on the throne, the image of God is damaged as we compete and fight against one another. But God used the prophet Isaiah to encourage God's people that he was sending someone new to sit on the throne to bring healing to the brokenness that sinful humanity had created. The prophet Isaiah described him as wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. The Hebrew word for peace is shalom, meaning completeness. We experience shalom when everything is functioning as God designed it to do. At Advent, we remember that Jesus was born on the purpose of restoring peace between man and God, restoring peace between people through his spirit, restoring peace a broken world. He would experience the, wor the worst that sin could bring, being, being hung on a cross to die. By this sacrifice and resurrection would open the door to a new kind of unity, a new peace, a new completeness, shalom, that could only be found on a relationship with the risen Jesus. But now in Christ Jesus, you who used to be far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace, the one who made both groups into one, who destroyed the middle wall of partition, the hostility, when he nullified in his flesh the law of commandments and decrees. He did this to create in himself one new man out of two, thus making peace and to reconcile them both in one body to God through the cross, by which the hostility has been killed. And he came and preached peace to you, you who were far off, in peace to those who were near, so that through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. As we light the second Advent candle, the candle of peace, we look forward to the day when the fullest realization of Shalom will be realized. When every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Let's pray. Jesus, our Prince of Peace, we thank you for the way you are at work, creating peace among people. You have called us to unity, to walk as one. Reconcile to God and to one another. We pray for the humility to bow before you and nothing else, and to lift one another up in love. 